All right, we're <clears throat> we're now doing the second half of this very beautiful and very practical sicha of the Rebbe <clears throat> on the um, Kuti Sichas Aleph, and it's about Purim Katan. <clears throat> And the Rebbe comments on what it says in the Shulchan Aruch. <clears throat> it's the last law in the Shulchan Aruch, uh, Orachayim. The, the Shulchan Aruch is divided up into four general categories. <clears throat> and um, the, the first category is called Orachayim. It talks about mostly about laws, day-to-day -day laws, in Judaism and putting on tefillin and prayer and um, and the holidays and it ends up with the holiday of Pur Purim and it talks about what's called Purim Katan in which Purim Katan is when there are two Adars in the month so the first Adar is not celebrated Purim it's only the second Adar but the first Adar they celebrate what they call a small Purim, Purim Katan <clears throat> in this small Purim there's basically nothing special that you do it just you, you you observe it by not saying tachnu and these other small things. But some people say you should make a meal. Some people should make a festive meal. And um, the Rabbi Moshe Isserlis, that he is the main commentator on the Shulchan Aruch, he say, he brings down tov leiv mishtatami. Not only should you be happy and <clears throat> purim, but you should have a, a happy heart all the time. All the time. Now, this is this happens to be a pasuk, a sentence. Tov leiv mishtatamid. You should have a, a heart like a feast, a heart like you are in a big feast all the time. Tov leiv mishtatamid. The good heart of a of a like a big uh, dinner. While your friends are all together and everyone is saying lachayim, <clears throat> that that should be all the time. You should have it all the time. So it says. In the Talmud, in Baba Batra, it says that this idea of Tov Leib Mishtatamid, that you should always be happy. How do you fulfill this sentence that it says in Mishle, in Proverbs? How do you fulfill the sentence? By having what's called Dato Rechava, a wide mind, a wide perspective. A wide perspective. When you look at things, you always put them in the widest perspective of all. Of all. <clears throat> and Rashi explains what it means over there in, in Proverbs he said you should always be happy with what you have <clears throat> alright so the Rebbe says these really are two basic principles in life which can also keep you which always keep you in a good mood and they imply two things <clears throat> so, you know, let's take it from what we said before. Let's take it from Yud Zion. We did this yesterday, but we can do it again. There's two details in this idea of Datam Katsura that from the fact that <clears throat> a person's small mindedness or big mindedness this causes <clears throat> what he has, this causes the, 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 is, is the result physically. He brings down a, a saying, <clears throat> an, an ex, a saying from the first Rebbe of Chabad. There, there's what's called a short prayer. What's uh, 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 it called? Tefillah Katsara. It says, The needs of your people, we'll say to God, God, the needs of your people are many, and they can't bear it. They have small minds. They have small minds. They can't. So God have mercy on them. That's the prayer. So the First Rebbe of Chabad explained it. Why are the needs of your people many? Why are your Jewish people, why are they lacking so much? Because their minds are small. Because their minds are small. Because they look at everything in the smallest and most selfish way. <clears throat> that's why they have a lot of needs. That's why they're lacking a lot of things. So that's what he said. What does it mean? <clears throat> Let's take it from, okay, you see where we are? Aleph. Mila Maila from above, Mashpim. Usually, 
God gives a person everything that he needs. We spoke about this yesterday. God always gives you what you need. He doesn't give, always give you what you want, but he always gives you what you need. But if a person runs after extras, things that are not necessary, not only will he not receive what he's lusting after, <clears throat> but he'll even lose, God forbid, that blessing from above, the things which he needs. So the person, because he's lusting after more, so he loses all of How common is it? How common is it and tragic that people become addicted to gambling or to drugs or to <clears throat> to uh, to eating or to any there's there's uh, maybe a thousand different things that a person can become addicted to officially <clears throat> the internet etc and because of it because he's lusting after these things that are extras these little quirks and perks and whatever that he gets from these <clears throat> things <clears throat> from the drugs and from liquor from that. So because of that, he loses everything that he's got. Well, I know, I know stories. The people that they had family, they had a home, they had this, and all of a sudden they got into online gambling or any one of a, 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 a how do you call it a a plethora, and they lose everything that they've got, and they even get jailed. They get put into jail, and they put in some of them keep commit suicide, and it's just incredible. The person just says, "Why? What? What did he do it for? Why? What did he want?" So the answer is, is it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. But people, because they, their minds are so small, they think that they are the whole world, and it's a big lie. <clears throat> so they try to fill up their spiritual lack because they can't see a big picture with physical things. You can't feel, fill up a spiritual lack, a, a lack of meaning with anything physical. You know, no matter how, how many sticks you... You, you eat, you're not going to get to truth or honesty or brotherhood or meaning or blessing. You know, all the steaks you're going to eat, you know, for free. And the, their prize is integrity. It's ridiculous, right? All a person will get is maybe fatter in the digestion. Kefishi, you do like it's known, the muscle of the Tzemach Tzedek. That the garments of a person have to be according to the person. If a person decides that he wants to get a garment that's twice his size, so it's, I mean, he gets more material. <clears throat> but on the other hand, it, it's not useful to him. It's not according to his size. The same thing, <clears throat> the amount of money that a person is given, sometimes it's the best thing for him. It used to be, I know that in Israel, for instance, very common. <clears throat> now people have a lot more money, especially the richer people. And a lot of these people... <clears throat> they came over with families from Europe, from from Iraq, from uh, Morocco, and their parents were poor, abject poor from Temen, Yemen, They're poor. And the parents had like 10 children, and they were the 10th. Right? <clears throat> but they themselves, they make 50 times, 100 times as much as their parents, and they live in a house that's 100 times bigger. But they only want two children. They can't take three, three children. They can't. They can't. They can't afford it, right? So they have two children, maybe a dog, maybe two dogs. <clears throat> but they can't take any more because they can't afford it. They're, they're, why can't they afford it? It'll disturb them. It'll, it'll break their, their pattern. It will, what, in other words, they have such a small worldview. Now in America, it's, it's, it's shocking. It's shocking. You know? I mean, people just they don't, they don't want to get married. They don't want to have children. And if they get pregnant, they want to have abortions. And they, you know, they just don't want any responsibility. And they, their life is so small and so narrow, and their their comfort zone is so thick that they just don't want anything to break it. So a person, a person like that, he's never going to be satisfied. He can have his, uh, uh, he can be live alone, and he's going to be miserable. He'll have money, he'll have everything, and it won't. Says so that's the way people are. Like it's, it's like a person that he wants a garment that's, and it's not doesn't fit him at all. Kach. <clears throat> Kach Gam Also spiritually, 
it says that a spiritually, if a person <coughs> that lusts after too much, as he's always going to be missing everything. Right? <coughs> So it's the same thing. These people, they don't want to have a lot of children because they have to share their time. They have to share their energy. They have to share. They want everything for themselves. And it ends up that they have nothing. <clears throat> Where does this come from? <clears throat> Why is it that a person's mind is so small? How does a person get so selfish? And so, <clears throat> how do you say, desirous, lusting of everything that he sees, that he has to have? Ha'adam lo marichet mahuto. Because a person does not properly estimate who he is spiritually. <clears throat> Therefore he thinks, Therefore he thinks that everything is coming to him. Everything that comes to me, don't disturb me. <clears throat> everything he sees he wants. Therefore he runs after extra Therefore he runs after extra things. <clears throat> But if a person has a wide mind, he has a wide perspective, then he sees himself in relation to the Creator. Now on one hand, you have to understand, in relation to the Creator, on one hand, we're nothing. God creates us from absolutely nothing, so we're really nothing. On the other hand, it's God Himself that's creating us. So we're very important in God's eyes. <clears throat> so therefore, we don't need all these physical things in order to secure our identity. You see, I joked that once there was a man that had identity problems. <clears throat> so he went to a doctor. The doctor said, I'll tell you what to do. Take a rope, tie it around your leg, <clears throat> tie it around your leg. And anytime you have doubts, who am I? You touch this rope and you remember, right? I'm Joe... Uh, Farb, Goldfarb. I'm Gold Joe. Gold. Touches the thing. I'm Joe Goldfarb. He remembers who he is. Well, one day Joe went to the mikvah and he took off the rope, put it on him. He went into the mikvah. It happened that somebody came out of the mikvah that also had identity problems. And he thought to himself, Well, look at there's a rope. You know what I'll do? I'll tie this rope around my leg. And then anytime I wonder who I am, I'll remember I'm Sheldon Groisboich. That's all I'll remember. I'll touch the rope and I'll remember. So that's what he does. He ties the rope around his leg. <clears throat> and when he finishes tying, just as he finished, Joe comes out of the mikvah. And he sees Sheldon with the rope tied around his leg. He says, Oi, if that's me, then who am I? <laughs> his whole identity <laughs> depended on material thing. <laughs> his whole identity was in that rope. The same people, so their whole identity is in their rating, in their job, in their <clears throat> take that away from them. Who are they? They're nobody. Right? They're nobody. And, and you have so many of them fight to get married, have children, the, the, the fear it's also they're so they're they're so comfortable in a way in their in their fortress that they've made around themselves. And that they don't want to take a chance. They, they want, not only do they want to control the present, they want to control the future, which no one can control the future. It's impossible. No one can control the future. Like there were people that were sitting in the, the 100th floor or whatever it was in the Twin Towers in New York, the safest place, the most secure place in the world. And they were sitting good. They were, each one of them was making, you know, $10,000 a week, whatever, it was bare minimum. Whatever, who knows what it was. And all of a sudden, they look out the window, and there's an airplane coming, crashing in. And now, an airplane itself is a very big miracle. A miracle. It's, it's, I don't know how many tons, thousands of tons of iron, and they're flying through the air. So this is the ultimate in, in civilization. You have an airplane, and you're sitting in a building that's 100 stories from the ground, and everything is secure, and this is supposed to be really civilization and... and, and uh, and you say development of man, and all of a sudden comes a, that, that person gets in the plane and drives it into that. So no one knows what's going to happen in the future. You don't know. And there's people exactly the opposite. There's people that uh, you know from rags to riches. There's a lot of stories like that. You know that a person suddenly, <clears throat> all of a sudden he gets a. Then there's people that they win all these millions of dollars, billions of dollars, whatever, in in lotteries, and it's a tragedy. 
And so nobody knows what's going to happen in the future. If a person really tries too much to control the future, then he goes crazy because it's impossible. So therefore, these people, they don't want to get married because things are uncertain enough as they are now. They're going to add another person is going to be twice as uncertain. <laughs> Certain it's impossible. And then maybe, you know, oy, they're going to have a child. That's even worse, right? Then it's going to really be uncertain. And with these children, it adds on this terrible, awful curse, which is called responsibility. Oh, no, not responsibility, right? The, the, the worst thing that they can possibly be is responsibility. <clears throat> okay, that's the big problem. One of the big problems with socialism and communism, that you're not responsible for your family. You're not responsible. The government is going to take responsibility. They know how to really make <clears throat> right, the, the money for everybody and what's best for everyone and <clears throat> you know what you should really do and what you should sell and what you should buy. Let's go. <clears throat> the reason is because of the person of the Oval, me, Shadato Rakhava, but a person who has a wide mind. What does it mean, a wide mind? He realizes I am just a creation. I am very, very important to the Creator. God is creating me, but I am not God. Then Marich Nachona et Mahutahu. Then he properly can at least begin to try to understand who he is. Omishum Kach. He feels that whatever is given from me above, is This what is given to him from above. This is exactly what is lacking for him. What I am given is exactly what I need. He doesn't complain. And he is not pushing himself to increase what he has to double it. In other words, it's not bad to double what you've got. It's a good thing. But that should not be make you miserable if you don't succeed. Because <clears throat> he knows that whatever he does have, this is from God's kindness. So therefore, what is he saying? Don't be an egotist. Appreciate what you have. If you don't appreciate what you have, you'll never appreciate what you get. You're not going to appreciate it. <clears throat> Therefore, appreciate. You have two eyes. It's a big miracle. You have a nose. You have a mouth. Appreciate these things. Then after you appreciate everything that you have and you really appreciate it, then go out and make a million dollars. Make $10 million. Everyone. But if you don't succeed in making the $10 million, you remember the main thing. I, I, I'm a miracle. I have eyes. I have nose. I have a mouth. So it could be the might. I mean, just think. <clears throat> Beethoven. Beethoven. If Beethoven would live today, I don't think anybody would even know who he was. Who listens to 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 to, uh, to the, uh, the classical music now? A, a few select people. Who would listen to Bob Dylan? Uh, and, right. Who would listen to Bob Dylan? A few select people would listen to him. Right. In those days, that's what there was. That was popular music. People flocked to the Beethoven. Who didn't know Beethoven? Right. And not only that. And not only that. In the in the time of Beethoven or whatever, in the time of this. How many other composers were there? Thousands, tens of thousands, right? Were there the level of, of Beethoven? I imagine to myself that I'm certain that, <clears throat> that they were to the level. Maybe they weren't as original, maybe they weren't what? They could, whatever. But, but technically, I'm sure that they were to his level. No doubt about it. But he just had a little certain thing that it got him in, right? It got him in and he became popular. He became, right? Van Gogh in his life didn't never sold a picture, never sold a picture. One picture is like now all of a sudden they're appreciating him. They got that's a lot, five hundred million dollars for a picture for his uh, a billion dollars. For one they're willing to pay for, for for one of his pictures. <clears throat> I went to the museum. I went there. <clears throat> Yeah, there's there are other people. There are other <clears throat> great, right? But you should know that there are also hundreds, if not thousands, of other painters in his time and of other times in the time of the the, the, the Renaissance period. Beautiful, fantastic painting. <clears throat> right, but there were certain ones that they just caught something and it catches people's eyes. But if other paintings would become pushed right in the market, nowadays there's a, you should know. Yeah, he tried to sell them. 
There are paintings now, for instance, <clears throat> somebody told me, I don't want to go into this too much, but there's some paintings that are somebody, <clears throat> he had a friend or a girlfriend, whatever, he gave him a picture, a present. This is in 1960 or something. And he happened to be that he found it and he un unfolded it. And it was an Andy Warhol picture. Now, if you know what Andy Warhol, it was the, the most not beautiful pictures you could imagine. I mean, there was absolutely no, it was, it was like an effort to be not beautiful. It was an effort to be stark. You know, they had the, the, the Campbell soup cans, you know, but, you know it, it, one of his pictures, it was worth like $5 million. Millions of dollars it was worth. No, <clears throat> who says this thing is supposed to be worth? Who, who determined that this person? You want to tell me that he was, he was a thousand times better than somebody whose picture sells for for five thousand? What are you talking about? <clears throat> right? It just happened to be that it came out. It came. Out. So what does it mean? What, what am I bringing all these examples for? <clears throat> the future is in God's hands. God decides He wants to make this person big. He becomes big. Why does He decide that? Who knows why? Who knows why? Right? Who knows? But one thing for sure, if any of these great men, the famous men, if they became great and they became famous, if they would stand up and say, listen, everything I have comes from God. <clears throat> Therefore, I am only going to be the type of person that God wants me to be. We see almost, almost to a man, they did exactly the opposite. Everything I have comes from me. And they were the most debauched and moralless people that you could possibly imagine. Right? As much as they could, could, they could, as much pleasure as they could suck out of the world, and, and as much meaninglessness as they could <clears throat> throw themselves into, they did. They did. Oh, wow. What's the purpose? What's the, what was the purpose? No purpose. That's the idea. Life is but a dream. Here the Rebbe is saying, no, listen, you have to put things in proper perspective. It could be that the only reason that you have been rich is to impress one person <clears throat> with your humility. Could be. That's the whole reason. And that one person, he'll also impress one person. But that one person, the third one, he'll impress 50 people. And that 50 people, maybe they'll impress each one of them, a thousand people. Oh, now you're getting people that they really believe that there's good in the world, there's a creator to the world, there's an order to the world, that there's meaning in the world, there's such a thing as blessing, to have a child is a blessing, to be healthy is a blessing, <clears throat> to be alive is a blessing. People will understand, start to see, every human being is precious. Every human, because they're all created by a creator. That's the idea. There's a creator that's creating everything. <clears throat> but you can only say that if you get put in the right place. And who's going to listen to you if you're a nobody? So God puts certain people up big. So they use their own free will, at least to tell everybody the truth. And they don't. They don't know themselves. So that's what it means. Because Exactly the opposite. They feel miserable. They don't have more. They can't figure out why they don't have more. You test. Mishiesh lo da'as or chava, a person who has a wide mind, ain't a gashmis tofeses makom bido. A person, in the previous, we, we said there's two faces of having a wide mind and being happy with what you have. Number face number one is the negative. If you don't have a wide mind and you're not happy, then you're always going to be lusting after things. It says, tzorchi amecham rubim, you're going to have more and more needs, more and more desires. You're going to be more uptight. You're going to be more angry if you don't get what you want. Depressed, however you react. <clears throat> That's the negative side. Here's the positive side. A person that has a wide mind and a gashmis in the physical world does not take up so much place by him. Lefi because shagashmis who b'meitz arba because the physical world is limited and small. And here you have, here you have, uh, okay, let's just, let's just, here. In law, therefore, tfisas mokom bedas rechava. A person who has a wide mind, the physical world, the physical proper possessions that he has, they're not important by him. And as you have to have a house, and you have to have a nice house, and you have to have a house where you can invite guests. You have to have a house where you can raise your children in. But those things are important. But they're not essential. Is not a, what can be more important than that? What can be more important? We'll see. Adavar acharav ulohet. What does he really want? Torah and mitzvahs. <clears throat> that what the Torah says, and to do the commandments. To learning Torah and do the commandments. 
Torah and mitzvahs are not limited in the limitations of this world. And not even the limitations of heaven. The essence of Torah and mitzvahs is the Torah is the wisdom of God, the creator, the creator of the spiritual. They're not spiritual. We're connected to the creator of the spiritual. <clears throat> the Torah is the wisdom of the creator. The, the commandments are the will of the creator. In other words, when you think and understand ideas of Torah, you actually have the wisdom of the creator. It becomes your wisdom. Now, who would dream that that's what God was thinking about? You think, what is God thinking about? Obviously, these Kabbalistic secrets that are up in the upper worlds with the angels. And this is no. That, that's true. That is what God is. But that's the outer part of God. What is God really thinking about in his essence? Right? Uh, if it, you, you marry a woman and you give her money, and you, it's on a condition, and then somebody else comes in the middle, and he says that and he, it knocks down the condition. That's what God thinks. If a person sells an ox, and his ox is over there, and he takes, it takes a donkey from the person he's selling it to, and he says, the donkey is mine, the ox is yours. Is this a good sale? It, and what if the ox that he's selling and the other person gives birth? Does the does the baby belong to the person he sold it to? How do you find out what the time is? This is what God is thinking. Who would dream of a thing like that? What does God think about that stuff for? So you ask a question. Well, I think you have a better question. What does he create that stuff for? What does God create cows and marriages and things? What does he create it for? We can't understand the wisdom of God, but the fact is he creates it. Torah and mitzvahs is the wisdom and the will of the creator himself. Ubedat Rechava. And if a person realizes this, the true value of what Torah and mitzvahs are, <laughs> that's the only thing that really matters to him. He would lo- like to have a house, he can have a Ferrari, five Ferraris, if that serves Torah and the commandments, if he's not fooling himself. If by means of having five Ferraris, he'll be able to influence people that they'll also believe that there's a God, but there's a God, he says, look, I have five Ferraris. I don't care if I lose them tomorrow. If I don't, I have them. Gone. And next day he does lose them. He says, I don't care. It doesn't make any difference to me. I, li- I, I, I would like them back. But the main thing I want is that what Hashem wants should be done in this world. Don't steal. Don't kill. Don't lie. Don't cheat. Wait, don't commit sexual crimes. That's what I want to see in the world. That's what I want to see. Not that everyone should have a, a chicken in their pot and everyone should have a Volkswagen. Everybody. That was the idea with the Germans, right? Promised every- That's why it's called the Volkswagen. Promised everybody's going to have a uh, <clears throat> chicken in the pot was, but the the Nazis were socialists. The Nazis were the, the socialists. It was a socialist, huh? Yeah, uh, I don't like jokes like that. Okay, Baal Das a wide person, Eno Chosha Begashmis, doesn't care about the physical world. Shekain Elu Devorim Sheenu Tovsi Makom Lido. They don't take up any place by him. Misha Nichan Bedad a person that has a wide perspective, who Choshe Rak he thinks only of the spiritual aspects of Agashmis, no Gaslo, and the physical world is only Bamida Shiesh Ladavar Kaesher the Torah of Mitzvahs. Right? Like the, the Jews, there, a lot of places, there was this place, Postville. But this was what I heard anyway. And, the, you know, Hasidim, they care about their front lawn. They don't care about the front lawn. It's a big problem. They don't care about the front lawn. I also don't care about my front lawn. Hasid, what does he think about his front lawn? He has a front yard, right? The kids can play in the front yard. That's all the kids. Front yard. Oh, a front lawn is the real <laughs> You got to mow the lawn. It was a big thing. It's a big ceremony. It's a holiday. You, you mow the lawn. You better have a mower. You can get a mower where you sit on. You have the thing. You, just, you have you, you can sit. There's a mower. Mower. You can sit on it, and you can you attach another one in back. Anyway, <clears throat> so in the postal or some other place, so the the non-Jewish neighbors were very aggravated at the Jews. You know, they didn't have nice lawns. So they got together. Uh, maybe it wasn't post maybe it was somebody else. So they got together and said, we got to get nice lawns. You know, that's all we, that all the, according to the Torah, you have to have a nice lawn. According to Hasidic, you have to have a nice lawn. According to, to, to normal, right, even, how do you say, uh, you have to have a nice lawn. What do you have to have a nice lawn for, right? And then there's, you have to have blue grass, and you have to have Kentucky blue, you have to have this type of grass, and this type of grass, and maybe you have to have the, what, what was it? Seed or sod, or hey, sod. <clears throat> oh, yeah. A big deal, I remember. Used to... <laughs> What'd you call it? Astroturf. 
<laughs> anyway, so they got together, and you got to have make a lawn. So they got a lawn. Now you got a lawn. You got to have a lawn mower, right? That lawn that grows up weeds. You don't just buy a lawn. You have to this. see. You have to have leaves. You have to have, it's no good. You have to have flowers. You have to have this. That well, you should know that in Kfar Chabad, that the Rebbe when they made Kfar Chabad, you have a You should know that in in Kfar Chabad, that the Rebbe said that people should buy flowers and they should make their front yards nice. The Rebbe said, and he even gave money. And Kfar Chabad read in the beginning, because people come in and they want to be impressed. They want to be impressed and see that the, the people in Kfar Chabad are normal people and nice people. So he said, okay, the Rebbe says to do it. Why did the Rebbe say to do it? Because it makes a good impression on people, the people that see the Hasidim lead nice, pretty lives. Right? It's not what's wrong with that. That's okay. Right? So in other words, the physical world is not important to us. On its own, but if it has any connection to Torah and mitzvahs and to good and to making the world a better place, for sure you do it, right? But it, the, the importance does not come from the physical itself; rather, it comes from the spiritual. What benefit does this have to the world? Kefisha Omer Rambam, like the Rambam says, Shaloni Tavu Achachamim Liamota Mashiach Biglala Osher Vahar Ravacha Bagashmi Shatia that the that in the days of the Mashiach, wise men. It says that there's going to be plenty in the world. The world will have plenty, that there won't be anything lacking. Everyone will be rich, everyone will have it. And, but the wise men of the Jews did not desire the days of the Mashiach for these physical benefits. Even though there'll be tremendous physical benefits, they didn't care about it. Kivan She'en Lezeth called to Jesus Malcolm because it has no significance whatsoever. The only reason that you should have a nice lawn in the front is that you should feel good. You come home, you feel good. You can learn Torah better, right? You, you bring guests into your house. They feel better about you. They'll listen to what you say. They know you're a practical person. It says, It says that in those days, everyone will have only one cow and two sheep. In other words, you stop Kobamuat. People in those days, they'll have the very many, you can have, every person can have a thousand sheep if he wants to, a million cows, but people don't want it. They'll, they'll only take what they need, right? People will take the very basic what they need. Only because of the Torah of Mitzvahs, because then people will understand godliness. Once upon the time there was a chassid, he could have been a rav. He didn't want to. He decided he wanted to use his intelligence and his abilities to be a businessman. Biyosa Socher, when he was a businessman, Shaka Mizcharo, he got too sunk into his business. He would skip davening, he would skip learning a little bit. He got a million dollar business deal. You can learn later. Kasav Lo Rebbe, the Rebbe, the previous Rebbe wrote to him, Ki Lo Adam. A person does not live alone on bread. Not on bread alone, but rather on the mouth, the utterance of the mouth of God, people live. Rav Ono Shalaguf, the reason that a person is hungry for physical, hungry for bread, Novea Mikach comes because the soul, the soul wants the spark of godliness. That's what we're learning about in the morning. Wants a spark of godliness which is in the food. But Dover Zemashpia Alaguf, and this it has an effect on the body. What is the spark of godliness? Essentially, it's the use of a thing. The spark of a thing is the usability of that thing. Right? Everything in the world has a spark of godliness in it that keeps it in existence. In existence. Everything. That, what is it? It's use. Well, how can that be used to serve God? Or how can it be used to help man? The use, that's a, if you have a table, the legs are broken, you can't fix it, then the spark is gone, the thing is dead, you throw it away. It's not usable. The thing is not usable, you throw the thing away. Same thing, to use a thing for human use is very good, but what about using a thing for godly use? That's what we learned also in the Mimer. Everything is used, should be used for a higher purpose. That puts the puzzle together. It says that's why we eat. We eat because there is a spark of energy in the food that enables us to learn better, to pray better, to be better people, because the main thing is the godliness which is in everything, not the thing itself. So on one hand, God does create everything. It's God creating it. 
And God wants us to utilize and use everything that he's creating for the purpose he creates it for. The, the needs of your people, God. It's a prayer. The, your, the needs of your people are many. The datam katsara and their minds are small. Mishum kotsaradas, because their minds are small, because they are egotistical, and they see only themselves. Tofeset hagashmiut makom. Therefore, the physical world takes a place by them. Therefore, your needs are many. Abomishadato barachavah, one who has a wide <clears throat> perception of the world and in everything he sees it as just part of the creation to be used for the creator in Hagashmis Tofezes Makom Lidido then the physical world does not have any influence on him exactly the opposite he influences the God, physical Mishum Archavasadas because his mind is why therefore therefore he will be happy all the time Okay, Urshu, get it? He will be happy all the time. Why will he be happy all the time? Because he knows that every moment has a challenge and every moment has a purpose. And every moment he has to use something in the world, even if it's own mind, his own mind, for in a positive way to serve the Creator. And even if the person is, God forbid, in Auschwitz or some terrible place, and he's just terribly depressed and he feels miserable, so he says, that's what I have to use to serve God. I have to use my negative feelings to serve God. I have to elevate them, to find something positive to think about. Right? Think about the fact that I am a creation, that God is creating me. For some reason, this is where God wants me to be, and He wants me to think positively. I have a responsibility to God to be positive, and that will make the person happy. When he thinks about, who am I? What have I got? I have life. I have free choice. I have... The future is open. Who knows what's going to happen in the future? Might be good. Might be good. Could be. Might be bad. Don't think that. <clears throat> think positively. <clears throat> now, we're not talking about to be foolish. We're not talking about jumping in a car and starting to drive without drivers, without, without taking lessons. Right? We're not talking about the going up on the, on the top of a building and jumping off and saying, you know, what me worry. <clears throat> what we're talking about doing things according to what the Torah says. The Torah says that you have to not endanger yourself. That's what the Torah says. The Torah says you have to be healthy. You have to eat properly. It says you have to get married. You have to raise children. You have to educate your children. You have to teach your children. So you have to have children in order to teach them. Right? You have to have a house. You have to put a mezuzah on your door. You have to have clothes. You put scissors on your garments. So you have to have these things, but you have to have them because the creator of the world wants you to. In that way, the world won't have an effect on you. You will have an effect on the world. Elabad. So that's why you have to have a good man. If you have a good attitude all the time, like the famous saying, doesn't bring it here, think good and it will be good. If you think properly good, then that makes a vessel that it actually will be good. That's what he says. I, it's not good. Here you're in a place of terrible situation, right? There were Jews that were in Auschwitz. There were Jews that were in Siberia. There were Jews and the, the sick Jews that got a bit terrible situations, right? What are they? This is in those situations. This is these are this is a test. <clears throat> this is your job. It's like an auto mechanic. What does he get? Broken cars. He doesn't get cars that already fixed. He gets a broken car. The more it's broken, the more happier he is. The happier he is. He makes more moral profit. Same thing, a person is in such a situation that makes him angry, makes him depressed, makes him lustful, makes him this. He should say to himself, this situation is being given to me by the creator of the universe in order that I should fix it. Up to now, it has not been fixed. The hard cases God takes to me. Why? I don't know, but that's why he does it. So therefore, this is the time you have to think positively. But as we know, human beings are human beings. Sha'anu mavakshin, therefore we are asking for God. Please, God, your the needs of your people are, may, are many, and they have small minds. That's the fact. The fact is, is the Jewish people do have small minds, and not just the Jewish people, me too. 
We're asking God should fill at Surah Amo the needs of the people. Hamarubim Limurot, even though Sha'im Novim, that even though that these problems that they have are a result of their terrible attitude. Even though the Jewish people have got a terrible attitude, they do, they are very selfish. And not just the Jewish people, me, even though that I am very selfish, and that that's why all these negative things are happening. Therefore, I say, nevertheless, God, have mercy. Give, give us what we need as though we had wide minds, as though we were making proper vessels. Perush Adavarhu, Sheva Yipo Tzadik Vakom. It says seven times a Tzadik falls down and he stands up. It's in the introduction of Igiris, uh, of Shar Yechad Vermuna. A few Tzadik, even a Tzadik, Eino Tamid Boto Darga is not in the same level. Kol Shekhen, how much more so, a person who is lower than the level of a tzaddik. According to Hasidut, Chabad, a tzaddik is a person that he always feels God. Just like we, or at least me, always feel, I always feel myself. And I know that I exist, I feel myself, there's no doubt about it. A tzaddik is a person he always feels Hashem. Why? Because Hashem is really creating me. I, I, should, I should be feeling God also, because he's creating me. He's closer to me than I am to myself. But I don't feel him. <clears throat> Maybe once in a while when I pray, who knows if that's if that's really God I feel, just a, a, feel an inspiration. But tzaddikim are people that they really feel that God is creating them every moment. They feel it. What that means? It means that it results in love and fear. Even a person like that, he has his ups and downs. A few tzaddik, eno tamid ba'oto darga, he's not in the same level. Kol shekhe, how much more so, mi shenachut yoter, a person who's lower than the level of a tzaddik, it could be that a person gets into a bad mood, you know, gets depressed. And Natanya, in this great length, talked about that in, in chapter uh, 27, 28. He will lose his wide mind. And suddenly he becomes selfish and negative. And suddenly the physical world starts to really get a place by him. Throws him into all sorts of lust or depression or the frustration, anxiety, confusion. And also, and suddenly he starts to think, listen, I'm a big tzaddik, really. I deserve more than what I'm getting here. That's what we're asking. We're saying, God, the needs of your people are many and their mind is small, what does it mean? <laughs> Even in the time when our minds are very selfish and very small, <laughs> God, please make mercy. Give us, what, give us what we need, even when our minds are small, even when we don't deserve it. Even when we're doing the opposite of making proper vessels for you. Forget about that. Give us the blessing anyway. According to this, Oh, how, how does this happen? How does this happen? How, how do we expect God to give it to us even if we don't deserve it? Because once in a while, we try, yes, to deserve it. We try, yes, to achieve this wide perspective. If we try always to be at this wide perspective, then God will fill all of our needs. That even when a person falls from his level, Yehiyulo kol tzorachav, you'll have everything that he needs. Storing up in the summer for the winter. Right? If a person, when he's usually, in a usual case, he tries as much as he can to have a wide mind and look at the world from God's perspective. As much as he possibly can. And if he does that, then when he comes to bad times, hard times, as God will have mercy on him in merit of those Wide times that he had. Lafiza, according to this Yuvan Mimor with Gomorrah, we can understand the Gomorrah, what it says in the Gomorrah. Tov, Lev, Mishta, Tomid, Zed, Dato, Rechava. A person who has a good heart, happy heart, uh, all the time, this is a person who is a wide perspective. Misha, Boorach, Kalal. In a general way, generally, this person has a wide mind. Generally, 
Mashrehu et hamshachot milamayla. Then he <coughs> allows these blessings to come down from above. Shemalim lo kol tzorachav that it fills all of his needs. Therefore, tov leiv mishtatami. Therefore, he will have a good heart all the time. God will really make him happy. Shetamid gam b'shashenovu midargaso all the time, even when he falls from his level, even when he does have become a negative negative ideas, negative feelings. And he becomes selfish. Nevertheless, God will always give him a good heart because he'll have everything that he needs. So I can connect this maybe. I once saw a video of the Rebbe that someone went by the Rebbe. And it was an older fellow, uh, maybe 60, 70 years old. He looked like a regular, normal religious Jew. You know, a little kippah, he didn't have a beard. And he went by the Rebbe and he said, The Rebbe, I want a blessing for happiness. And the Rebbe said, Amen. I told you this before? Yeah, I told you. <clears throat> yeah. And he said, Amen. And um, he didn't move. And he said, Rebbe, I want to change the blessing. So the Rebbe went. What's wrong with that? He said, I want a blessing that I should always have a reason to be happy. And the Rebbe said, Amen. <clears throat> so here we, have two, here we have the two things. Number one, that you should be happy. Right, uh, be a blessing for happiness all the time is a wonderful thing. A person should be always happy, no matter where. What, even when he's in, God forbid, in a concentration camp, the worst possible situation, it's a blessing that he should be happy. But then he said, you know what, Rabbi, <clears throat> I want to change that around. Why should I have bad situations to be happy? Give me all the time good situations and let me appreciate them. Right. So he said, Amen. So that's what he's saying. Even in the times when I'm not happy on my own. And I'm not happy on my own. Even when the time it says that Sadiq when he falls down from his level. But give me good things anyway, so I'll be happy. It'll make me happy. May God do this soon. And may we all be happy and dance with Mashiach now.